the Belgian Grand Prix was pretty much a victory parade for Max Verstappen. His RB18 was in another class to the rest of the grid all weekend, and no one seems to really know why. Ferrari were unfortunately not at their best as a new technical directive addressing the flexible floor took effect and seemed to take away any advantage they gained over the summer break. Mattia Binotto is obviously not happy with how this season is going and is trying to take his frustration out on Red Bull. But did he really need to accuse them of cheating? Verstappen was forced to start from 14th on the grid, which became 13th as Gasly retreated to the garage before the start, as one of several drivers taking an engine change penalty. On soft tires, he quickly sived through the field in his dominant Red Bull. Following an early safety car, the Dutchman came through in 7th after just 5 laps and then steadily moved up to 2nd, passing 2nd starting teammate Sergio Perez. That became 1st after leader and pole sitter Carlos Sainz pitted, and after Verstappen had made his first pit stop on lap 16, he comfortably passed Sainz for the net lead on lap 18. Verstappen then regaled the tens of thousands of Dutch fans that flocked to Spa with a crushing display taking his ninth win of the season with a 17-second gap to Perez in second. Afterwards, Verstappen said his car was on rails on what he hailed as an incredible weekend. It was quite a hectic first lap to try and stay out of trouble. So many things are happening in front of me, he said. But once we settled in after the safety car, the car was really on rails. I picked the right places to pass people and we could look after our tires and that's how we made our way forward. After that, once we were in the lead, it was all about managing everything. But this whole weekend has been incredible. It was the reigning world champion's second win in a row at the historical Belgian circuit. Not that the 2021 instalment can be called a race, but that wasn't his fault. Max was already in complete control of the championship before the summer break, and there was talk that Red Bull might already be switching their development plan to 2023. But that was obviously not the case. The RB18 completely outclassed their direct rival Ferrari all weekend and was almost two seconds quicker in qualifying than the Mercedes team, who were praying their complaints about flexible floors would help them close the gap to the top two teams. With Mercedes' accusations that Red Bull were cheating proven unfounded, it is now Ferrari's turn to try and peg them back. Ferrari are concerned about the FIA's ability to police the budget cap and miss Red Bull's alleged plans for a lighter chassis. If you cast your mind back to the start of the season, teams were incredibly worried that the budget cap might be unachievable. In fact, it was Christian Horner who was the most vocal at the time, especially in regards to how global inflation was affecting how much money the teams could spend. He said that the big teams such as his own outfit, Red Bull and Ferrari would be completely unable to operate under the budget cap. Well, Red Bull and Ferrari have emerged as the two leading outfits this season. It's now Ferrari who are complaining about the budget cap. Instead of how little they can spend though, their concerns are over the upgrades said to be in the pipeline over at Red Bull. Most teams started the season with challenges that were above the minimum weight, Red Bull included, though the Austrian outfit are reportedly preparing to introduce a significantly lighter chassis before the season concludes, shaving around 4 kilograms in weight off the RB18. The Red Bull is thought to be around 7 kilograms off the minimum weight limit, so this would be a significant reduction for them. Ferrari principal Mattia Bonotto does not see how Red Bull could do this and still adhere to the cap, while he's not confident in the FIA structure for policing the ruling. The number of people in the FIA monitoring it is very little, said Bonotto of the cap. It has to improve for the future because it would be really bad if somehow a championship was dictated by a financial regulation and not technical or sporting. I cannot know what they're doing, if they have a lighter chassis or not, but the budget cap is always a concern. Earlier in the season, we spoke at length about the possibility of a championship being decided by the budget cap and what effect that would have on the sport. The outcome of the 2021 championship seemed to be headed to the courts when Mercedes took the head of their legal team with them to a post-rate meeting in Abu Dhabi. Fortunately, that didn't happen, but if there is a belief that one team has illegally exceeded the budget cap, then don't be surprised if their rivals attempt to take the result of the championship to court. Whereas in 2021, it was fairly easy for all the parties to see the facts and for the FIA to explain how Michael Massey came to the decisions he did. Whatever they said to Mercedes last year clearly placated any thoughts they had of taking the result to the courts. But when you think about budget caps and the level of financial wizardry that happens around the world every day, you have to question how hard is it to actually breach them? 
Bonotto is clearly concerned about the number of financial inspectors and regulators the FIA has monitoring budget caps. If we got to the end of the season and Ferrari could make a case that Red Bull had exceeded the budget cap, then the championship title could very easily be taken to court in an attempt to get complete access to the Red Bull accounting books. Even then though, how easy would it be to prove any wrongdoing? Financial fraud cases take years and years and years to complete because of the sheer volume of work required to go through a company's books, and this case wouldn't be any different. After questioning how Red Bull could pay for a new chassis, Mattia continued by saying, The financial regulations can make differences between teams in the way they are interpreting and somehow executing it. And we know we need a very strong FIA to make sure they are properly focusing. Otherwise, the regulations will not be fair and equitable. Ferrari would never be capable of introducing a lightweight chassis or a different chassis through the season, simply because of the budget cap, and I would be very surprised if a team is capable of doing it. And if they are, it is back to the regulation itself. Is it fair enough? Is it equitable enough? Is the policing sufficient? It is probably reasonable to say that the FIA do not have the manpower to regulate the team's spending with complete certainty, something that Mateer is very openly trying to highlight. But does he really think that Red Bull is cheating, or is he just playing the same games we see the team bosses play every year? Christian Horner and Toto Wolff are especially good at highlighting things they think their opponents may be doing illegally. They encourage the media to run with the stories, make the situation as big as possible, and basically force the FIA into investigating. The flexi flaws this season are a perfect example of this. This whole accusation over overspending by Red Bull stemmed from a rumor they were building this new and lighter chassis for this season, which Christian Horner has now denied. No, there is no lighter chassis, he affirmed. These chassis will run for the next few races. As for whether Red Bull are going to stay within the budget cap this year, Horner assured, yes, we've had less upgrades than Ferrari and Mercedes. Toto Wolf also pitched in by saying that Mercedes wouldn't be able to build a new chassis within the budget cap. We wouldn't be able to introduce a chassis at that stage of the season, said Wolf. We are massively overweight, which we haven't been able to sort out because we're trying parts on the car in order to solve our various issues, so can't afford that full stop. So, what was aimed for by introducing the cost cap absolutely hit the target. It is what they wanted to achieve. The big teams can't just throw money at it. While Ferrari and Red Bull have been able to spend money on weight-saving upgrades, Mercedes' scattergun approach to solving porpoising has clearly cost them when it comes to the budget cap. Mercedes are believed to be around 10 kilograms over the minimum weight allowance, which will be costing them a huge amount of time on track. In response to the budget cap concerns, an FIA spokesman said, The FIA is committed to robust monitoring processes and will continue to strengthen, develop and refine all areas of its activities in this new era of Formula 1. The budget caps are only a year and a half old. The new regulations for this year means teams want to innovate and upgrade as much as possible, which will push the budget cap monitoring process to the absolute limit. This will be the most challenging season for the budget caps, and there may well be mistakes along the way. We just have to hope it doesn't have an effect on the final championship standings. Do you think the teams will find ways around the budget cap, or do you trust the FIA to successfully police them? Let us know your opinions in the comments below, and until next time, Drive safe and bye-bye.